Welcome back to the Astro Park, everyone. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and spring has finally arrived in the Northern Hemisphere, which means that it's time for a new galaxy season. So for those of you that don't know, during this time frame from mid-March to about early June, the Earth will be in a position where when we look up at the night sky, we're actually seeing objects that are outside of our Milky Way. And these objects tend to be other galaxies. And a large concentration of galaxies reside within the constellations of Leo, Virgo, and Ursa Major. Now, with all these galaxies in the night sky, it can be a bit overwhelming to decide which targets to be going after. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what I consider to be the best targets for galaxy season that you can observe or image if you're having some difficulty deciding on which targets to go after. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First up in the constellation of Ursa Major, we have Messier 81 and Messier 82, also known as Bode's Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy, respectively. Bode's Galaxy is a grand design spiral galaxy, and the Cigar Galaxy is a starburst galaxy that we see edge on from Earth. Both galaxies are bright enough to be picked up by your camera sensor at any exposure time. With a long enough integration time and a dark enough sky, you can also pick up the faint structure of the integrated flux nebula that surrounds both galaxies. Here's my very first astrophoto of M81 and M82 in 2020. And here's my second attempt in 2021. And I hope to make some new improvements this season. Up next in the constellation of Leo is the Leo triplet. As its name suggests, the Leo triplet is a small group of three galaxies, Messier 65, Messier 66, and NGC 3628, or the Hamburger Galaxy. It's another group that's somewhat bright enough to be picked up by your camera sensor with a short exposure. And with a long enough integration time, you might be able to reveal the faint jet of gas emitted from the Hamburger Galaxy. Here's my first attempt of the Leo triplet from 2020, and hopefully I'll be able to revisit this region this year. Next, we have one of my favorite galaxies, Messier 51, or the Whirlpool Galaxy. Like M81, the Whirlpool Galaxy is another grand design spiral galaxy in the constellation of Canis Venoctici. M51 also interacts with its companion galaxy, NGC 5195, and both galaxies are extensively studied by astronomers and astrophotographers alike. Here's my first attempt imaging the Whirlpool Galaxy in 2020. And here's my second attempt in 2021. Next on the list is Messier 63, or the Sunflower Galaxy. Also located in Canis Venoctici, the Sunflower Galaxy is classified as a flocculent galaxy, meaning that there's a lack of large-scale continuous spiral structure in visible light. If you have a camera with a wide enough field of view, you could also potentially grab its companion galaxy, UGC 8313. 
Here's my first attempt at imaging the Sunflower Galaxy last year. Although I'm pleased with this attempt, I think it showed up a bit small in the field of view. So this year my plan is to use a telescope with more focal length to get up and close to the galaxy to pull out more details. And last on my list is Messier 101, or the Pinwheel Galaxy. Located in the constellation of Ursa Major, the Pinwheel Galaxy is quite large, with a diameter of 170,000 light years. Although the galaxy is large in the sky, it has a low surface brightness, making it a bit difficult to locate. So dark, moonless skies will be your friend in scenarios like this. Here's my first attempt imaging the Pinwheel Galaxy in 2020, and hopefully I'll have the opportunity to revisit the galaxy this year. To get the best results from your observing or imaging sessions, you want to make sure that you use the proper equipment as well as have the proper sky conditions. Galaxies are broadband targets, which means that they emit light on a broad level of wavelengths on the visible spectrum. So ideally, you want to shoot your galaxies from a dark site where the skies are as dark as possible. And you also want to do this during the phase of the new moon or when the moon is not visible in the night sky. Now, if you're somebody like me who doesn't have access to a dark site, then using a broadband light pollution filter will be your next best option. And I've had some personal success using the Optolong L-Pro broadband light pollution filter as, in my opinion, it provides the most natural colors for broadband targets. Also, galaxies are tiny, distant, faint objects. So for your equipment, you want to use a telescope that has a long enough focal length to get the best resolution possible. And from my experience, I tend to have good results from using telescopes that have a focal length of at least 800 millimeters or longer. So you'll be seeing me use two telescopes for galaxy season. I'll be using the Orion Eon 130ED triplet apochromatic refractor with a focal length of 910 millimeters. And for the first time on deep space objects, I'll be using the Celestron Edge HD 9.25 Schmidt Cassegrain with a whopping focal length of 2,350 millimeters. But I'll be taking that down a notch with the 0.7 times focal reducer for a focal length of 1,645 millimeters. So those have been my recommendations on the best targets for galaxy season. Which galaxies are you looking forward to either observing or imaging? Let me know about it in the comment section down below. As always, Thank you for watching Astro Park, and until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies.